Hello, 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 people, peeps. Okay, so punching shear, punching shear. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They have arrows going down here. Makes you look like you're slipping on a, slipping on a condom or something like that. Okay, the deck is just slipping on. All right, it's not really happening that capacity. It's happening in a deflective uh, action reaction so this deck between here and the next column or wall connection is deflecting when it deflects it stresses strains this connection here and we can do it like this if we like and as your rotation as it dips down your rotation direction where is that rotation I know I got some bandits out there, some people that, uh, let me just address this real quickly. People that do, uh, plagiarism, they just take my, my, uh, analysis and, and theories and just take them for their own without even just, you know, triangulating back to where it came from. Cantilever in this capacity belongs to me. Uh-huh, I'm the one that calls it a cantilever. So if you're using cantilever in your discussions, you should be thanking me. If you're just using it to t banter with me in here, well, then that's great. But if you're using it somewhere else, well, then uh, you're committing plagiarism. And it's all about character at that point, which you would be lacking. Plagiarism also goes on the person who lies, on the definition I found. Let's go to, so I had to bring that up. So the, the reactions I explain here, also why I'm telling you that, is that it's not explain like that in, in, in engineering textbooks, etc. Let's go like this. The rotation is really there upon the critical shear zone, this, this top, the cap, the full, the full size cap of it. Okay. And here they have it going like this, just like all around it. Around it here in this area here and back here and around it. Well, that, that's nice. Um, it's, uh, why would it deflect there? Because considering it's connected somewhere else, so this is not just a freestanding pad that's just floating up in the air on top of one column. It's connected somewhere else. The mid spans or the spans between the two of the, uh, the mid spans between the, um, the rigid locations. So the rigid location would be first at the cap here and then at the wall where I talk about the cantilever reaction or support system of a slab that if it's anchored down if it's anchored down you're going to get and the rebar is, is configured in such a capacity that I have already talked about you're going to get a rigid a cantilever um, effect on this pad you're going to get a little more than just it going back to the wall you're going to get that ramp up I talk about ramp up of uh, the stresses to rigidity to rigidity the cantilever if you will and these are as cantilever on top of the column there if they present now I'll add I'll add this so you get deflection let's put let's pretend like this is the vehicles on the side planter box is on top of here pretty much and it, it uh, extends extends down planter box all right, and it, it comes forward, but come forward, it comes forward a bit, and it stays rigid. Okay, so think of a seesaw again. Remember the seesaw? Do 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 do. Hold on, go backwards. Do 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 do. There's this, there's the seesaw. Here's person X. Here's person O. Person X. Um. Okay, so the seesaw at first in. Theoretically supposed to be equilibrium, but you can see per my cantilever um, behavior reactions and the tributary area or the critical shear area also how they you know, how they interact they're not equal to each other they don't make that it's in theory it should be but it's not done the cap is not equal to the wall the zone there is it's not equal to it. And I would argue 
that if it, if it was so insignificant, the wall, then why stitch it all the way up? Why stitch it up? Really, it's, 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 it's for some reason at the wall, everybody understands, run that reinforcement down there, connect the wall fully. But when it comes out to columns, you're like, oh, okay, make, a, make this thing here, this critical shear area here, and connect the pad to it in multiple directions times, we can say times four directions. And that'll be okay. So why don't they extrapolate and do the same at the wall? It'll save your steel. Why, why bother? Why bother with all that extra steel when you can just do that amount of footage and just call it a day? Why stitch the whole wall up? I'm being facetious. The answer is obviously uh, that you do it. All right, here's the, uh, the uh, uh, a, a uh, seesaw. But it's, it's balanced. By itself, it's balanced. There's the its center of inertia, or whatever you like to refer to it as. It's center mass on this seesaw right here. It's balanced. A and B side are balanced. Now on the A side now, we, we now introduce a vehicle. Let me clean this up a bit. Let me start over. So I'm going to do your seesaw again. We'll do A and B. Um, consider that level. Up here, I'll do the. Uh, um, I'll do this. So this is car side. And this is deck side, pull deck. So this is P deck. And this is car, the vehicle, automotive. However you like to look at it. Now let's run it on top of the overlay of top of this punch shared location. So we'll put car, and we'll put P deck pull deck over here and let's put the deck down I think of your seesaw so what happens if the heavier person is on this side of the seesaw on the A side than the B side well the B side can't it's got more work to do but it can it can't make itself heavier or stronger so it just can't do it it's just B just happens to be lighter so here's the car that's the A so A loads this side of the seesaw B's over here and it's just, it has no capacity to, to equal out the weight on that side. The deflection, it's act, and, and the B side acts like a, I'm going to make a little, do a little, um, take some uh, liberty here. That's the deck, that's your division. The cars, I'm going to put some steel across here. And when you load this and deflection happens, this side um, considering the grip force inside this concrete is greater than the grip force in the side to the right. The re this being anchored better than this. So you've got two people playing um, tug of war now and the rebar is the cable between the two. Um, yes, I'd say tug of war. I have a so then you're pulling down you're pulling down on that. You're pulling down, um, can you pause that and get back to that screen? So I uh, found a different version we'll use. This is the column, this is the column here. So we'll use that. Here's your column. And let's put that steel there. And on this side, let's make slippery hands. That's the concrete. On this side, let's make it not slippery hands. So the, 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 this is getting loaded more so than this is car, right? Car side is being loaded more than the right side. With deflection taking place. Deflection taking place. Now that would just be isolated to this side, right? See the reinforcement column there? It would just be isolated to this side. And that would be typically yes. Except for in our case, we have the columns and then we have the deck. And across those column heads right here, okay, right here, and I'm going to erase that, is some rebar that goes across from one part of the deck to the other part of the deck across the column head. It's the negative steel. It's the top steel. And if it stays anchored, then this deck goes nowhere. It just stays where, if it stays where it is, it goes nowhere. But slippage happens. Deflection happens. When deflection happens, it puts strain, stress rather, on the, uh, 
bond, the concrete bond there. That rebar starts slipping. It then has powder, dust, etc. inside that rebar slip and it gets a rebite. It gets to bite again. It holds on even more with the powder, dust, pulverized concrete inside of there. And I do a lot of rebar pullout tests, so that is true. You'll get a release and then all of a sudden you'll get a, a bump up, up in pressure again and your indicator, your load cell will start reading higher again just for a little bit until it breaks free that, that, that uh, powder dust that acts like a wedge inside the round hole where the rebar is. So if you can visualize that. Um, the deflection happens the deflection happens down, right? The arrow's down. But there's those cracks there, so the rotation on this side, this side, is like that. And it opens up our fracture like this. And it can open it up internal like that too. But it opens it up like that. Now, with all that said, I want you to think about the car garage area where you see the rebar still in place at the top. What does that tell you? I'll give you a second. You can pause the video if you want. All right, continuing. It tells you that the grip force in the column area of that steel held on more than the either side of the pool deck, the, uh, the car decking area that went down. The left side, the right side, north and south, that the, the bond was great inside the column, greater than the column than it was in the slab itself. And so when the deflection happened or the vibration cycles over years, the most stable part of the structure of that was at the columns. I explained that in a private group. I don't know if I explained out here in public why that detail. And I guess you got to join the private group if you want that detail. So the uh, so now you're seeing the seesaw effect of this side of the seesaw. So let's change colors. Let's do that as a seesaw. This side gets cars. This is just a pool deck, the P deck. And there is no um, real, def there's deflection over there, but there's no loading, <clears throat> cycling heavier loads like the car loads on the left side of the seesaw. On the left side, it keeps cycling and cycling. Deflection starts taking place via our bond break. Now, I think this happened back in the 80s that this was the original um, issue not um, and you could see that in ponding water probably if you could find images in the 80s of, the, of this of the ponding water there and then he put that leveling uh, deck on interesting how thick that deck is it seems like uh, it exceeded the 40 pounds per square foot allowance just by the in many in many locations just by its thickness of the extra slab Something was six inches thick. Concrete weighs 150 pounds per square foot. Six inches thick. You can see all you need is two surface square feet, and you've just made 150 pounds. You've got, well, approximately 75 pounds at a six inch depth. Um, so you're, you're exceeding many places um, the, load, the load capability of the deck. So your deflection, your deflection could have started Sorry guys, there's something in the background. Could have started uh, as a result, further accelerated as a result of the, uh, the decorative slab being added along with the weight of the tiles. Decorative slab being th appears to be thicker at the south wall tapering down to the mid deck to the drain systems. They look like they taper off to approximately two inches. But at the wall, it looks like it can be out of you know six six additional inch, inches, plus the water plus the uh, waterproofing, plus the sand, plus the tile, plus the dead load of plants, uh, pottery, and then people, human traffic, human trafficking. So that's the P deck. So the again your your load is happening there, and I think your slippage. Um, uh, well, a, a slippage 100% can be determined what held and what didn't. In this case, the car deck created a deflection. The the bond was on the car deck side. The brake, the bond break was on the car deck side, where it relates to the uh, uh, planter box that we that uh, that I that I pointed out some time ago. 
with the uh, come on column, that K column that everybody now has revealed about four weeks ago now. The image has been revealed. I revealed it months ago. The rebar at that location, the rebar is on the deck, on the pool deck side, and it goes up like that. That tells you the anchorage was here, stayed, stayed put. The slippage side is over here, which will put it on the car side. Would we'll put it on the car side. Now you can get the, if the deflection's in the pool deck side, you can get there by, you can get that deflection and then it's straining, pulling on the car side. The car side releases and allows that to go down. Now, the, they went down together, not separately, because you don't see fractures separating the two. In other words, you don't see that the one half of the deck where the cars are, for example, one half of the, above the column here, stay put, and then it, so the right side went down, let's call it, and then the left side, the car area stayed up and then went down secondarily, and that's why you would see this huge break between the two. It, it's not true. And in fact, you would see the unzipping of the rebar, which you see in the car garage area from the ceiling, the unzipping of the rebar from the concrete, or unzipping the zipper effect of it. All right, so this video is going up. I have some good goodies in here. You you should dive into it more, and I'll end it again with thanks for you know you 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 loyal people there. No thanks to people that doing uh, plagiarism. You know, all you got to do is give a shout out, but you, you just come over here, you just want to take the data, take my wording, and and act like it's something that you used before, and just start publishing it now like it's your words, such as cantilever now, because someone wrote me already, and it's in the other forum, it's over there in uh, Engine Tips, someone wrote me saying, hey, they're using your word cantilever over there, I'm like, off the wall, I'm like, really? No one else said cantilever, right? So that was nice of someone to write me and understand that that was my word, my uh, phrase, and my belief. So, you know, thanks to uh, Phil, as an engineer here, you guys have seen Phil's comments pinned. Phil told me that, you know, he's used to getting his stuff jacked. So he said, uh, you know, not don't think it quite as a compliment, but, you know, it's how engineers are, is what he said. He, all the engineers he worked with at, at his location. Um, you know, would, would publish his work, take his work as their own, and and, and quite frequently, you know, he'd get irritated, but he, he just learned to, uh, you know, not call him a name. It's uh, it's very, it's very, uh, you know, insulting, and for someone to steal something from you, and then publish it, guys. It's that's 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 disgusting. So again, you engineers or whatever you may be over there that are taking my wording, I, I don't mind using my wording, but just trigger it back to me, all right? Trigger it back to me, being fired back to me. You know where it came from. The recognition is not yours. Don't use it like you've ever used it before. Because as far as I know, I'm the only one talking about cantilevers and or this structure and cantilevers as it behaves against the, uh, the wall system. And also, the column heads, what's left behind, the punch shear sections here. That, as far as I know, I'm the only one that talks about it like that, that there are cantilevers, this reinforcement, this critical shear zones up there. And also, there's critical shear zones at the wall created in the form of cantilevers. All right, love you guys, and um, thanks for uh, letting me know that people are already... Uh, um, committing plagiarism again shame 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 on you shame on you still not late too late for you whoever you are to uh to uh give credit where it's due um don't be a thief take care guys love you bye whoops So you saw the uh, the drawings were public out there in the narrative over there. So that was uh, all fair use stuff. I'm trying to figure out how to close this out. Oh, there it is. Bye.